You're good? We're good? Can you hear me now? Wow. Do I need to do all the announcements over again? No, we're good? This is me just testing the mic and making sure we're good to go. All right. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, church, for showing up and being gracious to each other. If we can't learn how to be gracious to each other here, how do we learn how to do it out in the world? Amen? We can talk, right? Let's, let's practice God's grace together as we, as we worship, as we spend time together this morning. I'm so glad you're all standing. Let's begin with our confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us and in your spirit lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, whom, through whom we have, been, have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope. For hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 
Let us pray. Ever loving God, your Son gives us as a loving bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we receive the word. The reading this morning is from the book of Proverbs, the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 6. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine and has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in town. You, are, you that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, Come eat of my bread and drink of my wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. The word of the Lord. Second lesson is from the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of our time because of the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what will be the but what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as, as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among our, yourselves, singing and making melody to, to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Would you stand as you are able to greet the gospel? The gospel today comes from John chapter 6, starting with verse 51. Jesus says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood will have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is the true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I abide in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that has come down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the true bread from heaven. Amen? Amen? When I was in high school, I sang in choir. I was a shy kid, if you can believe it. I was reserved and unconfident. I knew I wasn't the strongest of singers. I often sang just off key, and I had a hard time training my ear to hear the harmonies in the music. So I sang for soprano because they always sing the melody. <laughs> That's a choir joke. Brandon got it. <laughs> I was seated next to the choir's strongest singers so I could hear them and follow their lead. I knew my musical offering was small because it was a part of something else. When I listened again to the music of the whole choir, my small part was transformed. The music would swell and move and grow only to shrink back down again. It would say something in many voices, which it could not say with just one. 
When I was in high school, I sang in choir. When I left school, I began to reflect on how singing in a choir was a lot like living a life of faith. My offering is small. What I can do with this one life is pretty measly. What I can offer, what I have to offer is just a piece of the whole thing which God is using. What I can give is a small part of how God is using me, using you, to make over the world. It's a small bit of how God is loving the world right back to how it ought to be. And that's how I think about Jesus these days. That Jesus is the way that God loves the world back to its wholeness, into its rightness, back into its perfect harmonies. Through discord, through strife, through suffering, pain, and the general crap of life, Jesus is working to love us back together again. In our Jesus story today, Jesus is still working this metaphor about bread. Anybody else tired about hearing about bread? Just me? Okay, cool. Um, and the folks who came to hear him are only getting more confused as this dialogue is going on. And maybe you are too. That's okay. Because the way Jesus is talking about eating flesh and drinking blood sounds very, like, zombie-esque to me. Anybody else? I think of vampires. And it's weird, right? It's weird. Like, ew, weird. Okay? It's shocking. But maybe that's the point. Because Jesus is making the claim that through him, God, the creator of the world and the universe, actually comes down from heaven to become a part of creation. The idea that God would have flesh and blood and give his flesh and blood freely and give it away, that's something that ought to shock us. The claim goes against so much of our understanding of what is religious or what is spiritual. Because often we treat God as if God is out there somewhere, where it, it, in the place we've yet to find. We tell ourselves stories about God dwelling in heaven, often that's above us, or that we need to find the right path to get to God. Approaching God becomes our religious ideal because it gives us a sense of our control over our own salvation. Often places of worship, like this one here, are relegated to the only time when God is mentioned in our lives. And all of this happens because it's safe. The idea that God would have flesh and blood is a shocking idea. Some might even say it's a little dangerous. It means that God is encountered in flesh and blood, even in the boredom of our everyday affairs. It means that we don't encounter God on our terms. Okay? Rather, God is encountering us when we least expect it. God is there at the checkout line in Walmart. God is there at our local diner, co-op, or the grain elevator. God is there in your homeroom, in your band or choir class. God is there in our places of worship, yes, but also at our kitchen tables. God is there as we sit in drive through lanes and as we sit next to hospital beds. God is there when we choose to neglect the needs of our neighbors, and God is there when we feel like nobody cares and we are all alone. God shows up when we least expect it in ways that we would normally dismiss, and God shows up in flesh and blood. So here we have Jesus claiming that he is the divine flesh and the divine blood of this world, and then he commands us to eat and to drink it. We don't need a God that is far off, somewhere out there. We need a God who is right here, right now, in the flesh. When a family struggles with loss, God is physically there to listen, comfort, and embrace. 
when our bodies become so frail that we cannot take care of ourselves, God will be there to feed and wash and care for us. When the tragedy occurs, God is the first to feel the pain, first to weep, and promises to be by our side. God so loved this world that God gave us Jesus to enter into our bodies too, that through us, God can be seen, touched, and heard. Jesus invites us to consume him, inviting us to take on, to take on his life so that through us we can each encounter the living God. Today's Jesus' command serves as a reminder that God is not distant, unreachable, or unavailable, but rather God is a real and present reality, active in our world. Our faith, then, dear friends, is not an intellectual exercise. It's not something you just hold in your head and believe the right stuff. This claim that the word became flesh means that God actually has become incarnate, or a body is a body in this world, a substance which can be touched and tasted. It means that we don't simply just follow Jesus or hang out with Jesus. It means we also consume Jesus and then carry God's promise with us out into the world. We come together each week to practice this right? In our worship, we practice what it is to live out our faith. We receive communion, God's flesh, Jesus's flesh and blood, and allow ourselves to be transformed. We pray for God's will to be done with and through us so that we can live this will and follow God's leading. We pray for God's blessing as we love our neighbor and do the work of ministry. Worship itself is not the point, my dears. Worship is just the lab for learning about how to follow God's grace. We experience it, we practice it, and then we live it out there, past the pews. And this has become most apparent to me, this living into God's grace, is that we sing. Think about it. Where in your life do you sing? When? Maybe you sing in a choir. Maybe you sing in the shower. Maybe you sing in the car while you're driving. And maybe, just maybe, you only sing here. In the pew where you're seated now. We sing in worship, and it's one of the few places in our society left where people will get together and sing in a group. And when, which makes me think, the only place I can really think of is like a rock concert. Ever, anybody ever been to one of those? Okay, glad you're still with me. When we sing at a rock concert, we sing along with what's going on. And why do we do this? Because no one can hear us, but we want to be a part of this excitement, this feeling, this movement, because music is just notes on a page until it is sung or played, until it meets with humans in bodies who make music real. Ephesians tells us today that we're not to neglect singing spiritual songs together, making known to each other, making real to each other the goodness of God, because we do not sing just for ourselves. We bring our measly offerings, our off-key moments, our mumbled harmonies, and all our missed notes. And somehow, when we all offer something, it's transformed into music. And it moves, and it lives, and it fills, and it feeds us, and it unites us into one. Think about it. The person that you sit next to every week in those pews is someone who thinks differently than you. Someone who votes differently than you. Someone who lives a totally different life. But in the moment that you, we start to sing the faith, you are together making something bigger 
you are singing God's grace into reality, beyond just a far-off concept, into something that lives and breathes and gives life. Our faith is not something that we live on our own. Think about those times, my dears, when you cannot sing that song that's in your heart because your heart has ached with loss or grief or sorrow or maybe just because you can't believe the words are true anymore. Maybe you've had that moment, I know I have, when all I wanted to do is sit in the very far corner and say nothing, but just weep and listen to people sing for me. Or when I couldn't, I was so angry at God, I couldn't say the prayer, but I could listen to a four-year-old say it behind me. We pray for each other. We sing for each other. That's how this moves and lives and how this faith means something God is not far off. In Jesus, God wore flesh and had blood. Jesus, be God became real enough to share our human life, all of it. And when we consume Jesus' flesh, Jesus' blood, we share God's life. We embody God's love for the world. We model and share this grace with each other and every single person we encounter. We practice it here. We live it out there. God's grace, God's presence goes with you. And now, dear friends, let's practice because it's time to sing. Amen.
I invite you to stand as you are able. Together, let us profess our faith in one voice, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today we will pray, and after each petition I will say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with hear our prayer. Do we need to practice? Do you got it? Okay. Let's pray. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and guide our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Wisdom has built her house. May the church be a house of wisdom for all who enter here. May we continue to grow and stretch in ways we never thought possible. Lord, in your mercy. Wisdom has mixed her wine. May the harvest seasons be plentiful this year. We pray for orchards and far vineyards, farms, and all of creation. Protect and conserve this beautiful earth. Lord, in your mercy. Wisdom has employed her laborers. Be with all who seek adequate employment. Guide our economic and governmental leaders to support the people of this world with fair wages and safe working conditions. Lord, in your mercy. Wisdom has invited her guest. Make your presence known, God, to all those who feel lost, abandoned, or hurting at this time. Direct your spirit of care to all those who seek healing and comfort. We pray especially for Rhonda and Doug, for Renee and Ron, for Lowell and Jane, Jaden and John Perry, for Kathy and Tom, for Joey and Brad, Rick, Jack, Lauren, Jim, Monica, Jennifer, Wayne, and Pastor Kendall. And all those we name now in the silence we keep. Lord, in your mercy. Wisdom has set her table. May this congregation be a welcome table to all who seek the refuge of God. Break down walls and barriers that prevent us from offering a seat at this table to anyone who comes. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up these prayers to you, O gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you be, I think it's time to do our offering, right? You may be seated. Let's continue our worship in this way.
Let us pray. Nurturing God, each day we witness untold miracles that are a testament to your love. Some spectacular miracles reverently remind us of Jesus' healing miracles. Other everyday miracles are quiet and soft, like a gentle mother's whisper filled with beauty and wonder. We prayerfully ask that these gifts be used to reach those in need, to experience the miracle of love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We continue to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you great peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing one more time. Love and serve the Lord.